they'll be calling you a radical. First off, my march has been changed from the 21st to the 28th. Some people that were going to meet me there or whatever, it's a conflict. Sorry about it, but it's going to be the 28th. I'm going to book my plane, hopefully my plane flight today, if I can get a good enough deal on it. But anyway, I'll be there. I'll be there the 28th. And I want to talk about American, North American downwinders. As I was talking to a brilliant young woman this afternoon, an incredible young woman at the university who's, I mean, she's going to make a great writer. I know she is. And I says, remember this and remember who told you this. When so-called so quite essential professors who teach about downwinders, which, oh brother, don't even get me going about what the downwinder scenario on their little club in Utah has evolved into. It's pathetic, to say the least. But anyway, I told her, remember this and remember who told you this. When you're talking about a downwinder, not just in southern Utah, across Oklahoma, across Kansas, Barack Obama, across whatever, remember this, do not speak as you're writing in past tense. Speak in the present and in the future for at least 24,500 years. We are the downwinders now. As this thing's been letting go for 883 fucking days, it's obscene. I just talked to a diver, by the way, he's not a Navy diver, he's a private contract diver, but you know, we got to having a real, we had a great discussion. I had a lot of great discussions last week. We're finally having these discussions. People are calling up, people are emailing me. I'm not just getting the paranoid call me anymore, and a lot of the people that called me in the early days, yeah, they might have been paranoid, but a lot of them were brilliant, but I'm having some serious conversations, finally, about how we're going to, look, from what I understand, Japan is the top. It slopes off like this. So people, it's, you know, yeah, the Navy has to be a part of it, is the ocean. This is going to be a mining operation. This is going to be Chernobyl on Balco. It's a mine, it's simply, it's simply the playbook has been drawn. It is the entombment. As somebody told me the other day, oh, a couple dozen, oh my. This is going to be so giant. I have some data here, I'll put it out there, that TEPCO's probes were down 283, 230 or 240 feet in the first, I believe, 70 days and detecting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This thing is gigantic into the earth. Now, the spent fuel pools in four, we know factually that some of them did go dry. Now, there's robot technology that maybe could swim. I believe that some of the pools have been permanently dry in four the whole time. Now, the steam that's coming out of three, is that melted down to the Pacific? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I believe it's the water that sells, and I believe it's China Syndrome. You know, the water that they're trying to use as cooling is so out of control. It's bad. And do not fall for this bullshit they got up a wall. That was a fucking joke. That wall was a joke. It never worked. They put it in so fucking late, it was a fucking joke. This thing's been poured in the Pacific the entire fucking time. Now, if I have to read the study again, I will. I've read it online over and over and over. Day, June, 2011. The French scientists, the Japanese scientists, their own dissertation released by the bioscience platform in Europe. Our studies show in the water column, 40 miles out from Fukushima, 300 meters down. Our radioisotopes show the three columns they went. One, three times. Two, 30 times. One, 1,000 times. So the studies have been that this is the greatest conspiracy in history. It is the greatest conspiracy of all time. To think about it, the marine biologists along California, you think about this. Well, I'm a stats guy. The statistical prob what is the statistical probability of 300 marine biology departments along the Pacific Rim in North America, private, public, government subsidized, university, states, colleges, what is the statistical probability of not one single marine biologist, not one single in the United States saying yay or nay? That statistically is impossible. That it, run your regression. Run your regression, you stats guys. Where are you fucking loser scientists? You blood on your fucking hands. Oh, I love dolphins. Oh, I love the freaking whales. Oh, I love the freaking ocean, huh? You're fucking liars. You love your money. You love your fucking glass house that you sit in. And it is a glass fucking house. And it's going to come fucking tumbling down. For we are the downwinders. Now, my march... My arch is going to be peaceful. Uh, it's going to be very peaceful. It's going to encompass everything. I hope that people can maybe even, you know, maybe dress in some historical garb because this needs to be a history lesson. That's why I'm going to do it the way it is. 
Why does it need to be? Because this country needs a fucking history lesson. Because this country, these fuckers have tried to rewrite fucking history. We need a saw, because this is about place and time and space. You don't just read about the shirtwaist fire in a book or film, and sometimes we become, we need to go there to show you this is real real estate. This is really where it happened. This is where their blood was. This is, as I say, in the more exposed manner. I spend my whole life outside. I'm rarely indoors, rarely. That's why I've lived my whole life. You know, we need... We need to take a walk. I'm going to take a walk. I'll go to Alexander Hamilton's grave so nobody is right there. It's right there. They talk about more history at the Trinity Church. The Exchange Bill. They talk, we want to talk about the foundation. What Sam Adams and the boys were up to really in the Dawson Tea Party. You know? You know it was about turf wars. Cheap labor versus non-cheap labor. Throw it, dress up in Indians and throw it overboard. You know, it was protectionism at its quintessential core. The Coast Guard at its quintessential core. Sam, you know, Samuel Adams, you know, all of it, all of it. George Washington's pseudo-adopted freaking son, Hamilton. I mean, this is the quintessential battle between the, you know, the English system and our system. We need to get back to what the reality of the truth is. We'll just go for a walk. You know, I'll lead you. Oh, well, I know that area. By the way, Jackson Pollock's and the Drippers and the first freaking abstraction print, their original studios are right there. I'll show you where those originally were. You know, a lot of people don't know a lot of these things, you know. There's so much history, but these are the marquee things that shaped labor and shaped freaking the enlightenment of people. People say, how does that tie into Fukushima? It ties everything into Fukushima. This last two years has showed you the freaking... Repress it. It showed you the vacuum that we've created at the top as Ross Pearl, you heard a giant sucking sound. Because what it does, when you strip away a person's freaking working power, the middle class's power, you suck everything from them. We lose our, we lose enlightenment of the mind. And these people are able to do this to us. Look, is it going to be the Navy? Actually, yeah, it's going to be the Navy and the Army. The only people that have the personnel, the manpower, the will to do that. Well, not even the will. Who else is going to do it? Oh, we're going to have freaking Blackwater, private contract, like we privatized and everything else. We've seen how, we, as you know, that was part of Megan Rice's protest. This is part of nuclearism. The whole thing, we've been scanned. We've been scanned from A to Z. Because you're working 65 hours a week, meeting your job. Tariffs. I can break all this down to tariffs. As Hamilton did. As Abraham Lincoln did. As... Freaking McKinley did, as FDR did, as that piece of shit, fake freaking... Anne Rand never claimed to be a fucking economist. She never claimed to be a fucking economist. That fucking groupie, fucking radical, fucking moron, lying, fucking idiot, Alan Greenspan, the fucking... That's who did this. They kidnapped the fucking Fed. And you want to get into the Fed with me? Fuck, can I go? Oh, can I? And I will one day. But that's a whole other thing. This is a quintessential battle between the empowerment of the fucking working class or the slavery of the working class. These American companies have simply dissolved all the working class that we build up and bloop, they're fucking using the same workforce that was using in Detroit, using it in Manhattan, using it in fucking Salt Lake, using it everywhere. The, same, the workforce has been replaced by slaves in China. It's the same people, the same thing, and they do it because they can. This is going to be a history lesson. My march is going to be peaceful. It's going to be loving. I hope, you know, it's going to cry across lots of cultures. I hope it incorporates design. Maybe we'll get some fashion come out of this. You know, I, I hope to see people, you know, even if it's just me or, and Thomas Ackerman show up, I hope, you know, we can, you know, talk about art. I, we can have a nice conversation. And the reason I pick in September, it's so beautiful in New York in September. Well, where in America, North America, is it not beautiful? I want this to be happy. I want it to be loving. You know, about design, about color, about happiness, the joy of this environment of ours. Really, you think about it, they strip everything away. It's those cold words that we were told, life is a test, that really all we have is the best things in life are free. Yeah, yeah. The environment, the sun, the wind, the birds, I mean, that is the beauty of humanity. That's what humanity is. We need to take that back outside. Now, I mean, I love to walk in Manhattan. Manhattan is spectacular to walk in. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful, and the history is so that the architecture, the sunshine, it's spectacular. They're taking that from us. The last thing they have, the purity, they're taking it from us. The fucking nuclear fallout is in the air. I mean, how fucking grotesque is this? Fucking Radnet, raise the limits. As you give your life a fucking... Nuclear fallout is cancer. Megan Rice, her parents right there in New York. Frederick freaking Rice is her dad. 
The Catholic workers' rights, that's why I'm doing this where I'm doing it. This incorporates it. She knows exactly what she does. She can pick any cause she says. Nuclear. Read her statement, what she says. Read that statement, what she says. She knows. She knows. She's right at the top. She knows. They know. It's nuclearism. It's the last freaking thing, she says, to heal our planet. This is all that counts. You know, this encompasses everything. Well, you know, and I'll do it. I don't care if it's just me walking along. I don't care. I'll take my camera and I'll give you a history lesson. In the more exposed manner. Out in the street. That's where we'll meet. But and I picked the song, you know, from the Who because the Occupy movement was won't get fooled again, please. Please, you old hypocrites. Please. You've been fooled your whole life because you laid down. And you you fell for the money. Just like everybody else fell for the money. I've used that line right here, out of there, for a lot of reasons, because it is a lonely battle. Now, it cuts across culture because he wrote that song about people at the so-called top, how lonely it is. That's my point, my point. These oligarchs, these people, they're doing, they do it because they can, but they're no different than you and I. They like food. They like the same things that you and I. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you and I. They like love. They love their children. They love their grand. Some of them. You know, some of them are some unloved freaking oligarchs, as he says in there, fight back on my anger, you know. I mean, I think that song really fits this movement. I'm not going to sleep in a park, and I want the police on my side. I want not the sucked up top of the banking oligarchs. Let's remember, Wall Street was gutted. The firm that I used to work for, 362 people, three people, replaced with a math PhD, flash freaking thing. Wall Street's gutted. I mean, I want the financial freaking district, the old school finance, the lost. I don't want these banker scum, because they are fucking scum. And nothing changed in the banking apparatus. Still, the credit default swaps as I was looking, because I think we've got housing 2.0. I'm looking, well, are they transparent? Can I trade derivatives in there? Okay, I mean, nope, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Our tactics need to change, but I'll tell you what's changed. Fukushima changed everything. Popism is dead. Out in the street, that's where we'll meet. Stay untuned. The 28th at Washington Square. We'll march over to Hamilton's grave, over to the Trinity Church, over to the Exchange Building, over to Battery Park. We'll just go for a walk. You know, we'll go down the Fashion District there. You know, as I call it, the Mall for Europeans. You know, it'll be a happy, fun time. It'll be a happy, fun walk in that beautiful sunshine. North America's so spectacular in late September. Spectacular. Stay on tune it.